Let's go ahead and break down some of the uh, news that happened last Hopefully week. I didn't go on too long. Oh, no, you're fine. Ah. You're fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, Google has shut down all of Stadia's in-house game development studios, leaving the fate of 150 employees in the wind, albeit Google has stated that they're going to be making efforts to transition any affected workers into other sectors within the company. Um, th- this reversal of Google's previous statements of holding fast to Stadia is of little surprise to those that have followed the company's brief experimental flirtations. Um, but I think what's really egregious about this to me is that so, so Google came out and they said, like, look, we are fucking dedicated to this. We're going to put the time, money and resources because we are serious about this. So they, they poach all this talent from like other studios like so, so those studios don't have those people anymore. They came over here to come work, to, to do their work. And then they fucking waste it by what Stadia came out last year, right? Like like middle of last year, maybe? I want to say, yeah, middle of last year sounds right. Yeah, it's not so. that old. It's I yeah. tested it at GDC 2019. I was able to get hands on with it when it was in like beta form. Yeah. Um, so, I believe Ren did the same thing. It's a shame he's not here. I know he beta tested an early version of it. Yeah, I uh, I played it like on the GDC show show floor, and it looked like garbage then. And I figured no one believed me. And I was like, "This isn't good. <laughs> it's not." But yeah, just so, just on so the front of. I'm um, sorry. Go ahead, Corey. So Ish and I actually got a chance to play it because we we got literally Google gave us a free one, and um, they're like, "Please, please play, <laughs> please Corey." Play it. <laughs> and uh, I actually got a chance to play the Stadia. Um, the the stadia game that was only exclusive to stadia uh called guilt g y l t um and it it wasn't a bad game it was actually it was actually pretty pretty cool i i describe it as like a a kid version of silent hill um and uh it was pretty it ran pretty well it just it really does depend on your internet um you know service and like how fast your internet is because there were moments that my controller would just like randomly disconnect um and then there were moments where like i just had to stop playing because it was it be, the internet was being very slow and it was just like choppy and everything but most of the time i'd say 90 percent of the time i didn't really have much of an issue that's good. Um, I have mm-hmm. some notes here from a friend of the show, Ramen Nomad, over on Twitter. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read off some of the notes Thank that they you. went ahead and sent Thank me. You, Robin. You're the uh, so, so they've had Stadia since launch, and they um, they said they got it mainly as a Destiny Two machine to use while the TV is being hogged by uh, his uh, wife and kids. Uh, setup was easy, but immediately I uh, said that that lag was definitely an issue over Wi-Fi. So. And I, I would say that for mostly kind of any kind of streaming, unless it's just video streaming, uh, you should always use Ethernet for that kind of thing. Uh, it says it's still terrible over Wi-Fi and that they have 300 up, 20 down, which is pretty damn good. Um, the only way to get good performance is through wired connection, It's and it's a data hog. Let's see. Input lag still an issue, though it's improved a little bit since launch. I, w- I would imagine for very specific games... Um, it's much more of an issue. Like if you're yeah. trying to play a shooter, like, I can't that, imagine that's not be playing a- Samurai Showdown on Stadia. <laughs> play play Sekiro on on yeah. Stadia. Get get that parry timing. Like down. Sam Show. That's a game that requires some very precise inputs, and especially if you're playing it online with other people. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I will say when I tested it at GDC, I was talking to someone who was working for Google. Like she was watching me play it. And I brought it up. I was like, how are you guys running this? So obviously, it was at a convention center. There was like a shit ton of other things going. And she had explained to me that they were hot fixing the Wi-Fi over from Google's San Francisco like offices to the convention center. So she is like, oh, there might be a tiny bit of lag and there might be a little bit of like uh, input lag. And I was like, okay, okay. And then she even brought up to me, I think if I remember, she said, oh, we're like recommending if people use it, we're recommending they use a wired connection. And then when it started coming out that that people were only getting good connections that were using like Google Fiber, like I was, I just was like, ah, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. For someone Um, who played it over Wi-Fi too, it's, it was, it looked bad. Like it just looked really bad. 
Let's see, and uh, Roman uh, Ramen Nomad goes on to continue that the controller apparently connects through Wi-Fi as, a, as opposed to just going to the Chromecast over what? Bluetooth, that's which is we- that, that's like an unnecessary step. Why? It, it's adding another layer of of input lag. Why would you? Yeah, do it that? was. I will say that much. Connecting, fi- figuring out how to connect the controller was even though we had the steps in front of us. Mm we were struggling with it. Like it was Is so it like one of those jokes where it's like, how many people it does it take to get the controller? Literally. <laughs> and, and, it, and, uh, and literally what it was is that, um, you have to like put a code into the controller and, um, oh, fuck. that is yeah, so it's overly screen. complicated. It's, it's, it's on the screen. Um, when you have the Google, the uh, what's it called the the chromecast plugged in and it says type in this this uh four combination button code from your controller to connect your controller and it turns on stadia it's so so weird yeah it's so weird have they heard of the sacred method of either hit the sync button or plug in a usb yeah yeah (laughs) nope Uh, Nothing like that. That doesn't exist. (laughs) So can you not use other controllers with Stadia? Are you locked to that one? No, I swear you can use like Xbox and PlayStation controllers. Can you use an Ouya controller? Oh god. No, I heard that name in ages. Jesus. That was Jose. actually speaking of Ouya controller, that's my second guess. Is like, is the controller good to hold? I heard it wasn't that great to hold. I've heard it's adequate, but you'd probably know more, Corey. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't tried that at all. I haven't tried using a separate controller at all. Um, and sorry if I'm being a little quiet. It's just, uh, it's just currently doing um, important document things. Oh, um, so, <laughs> to be Anyways. fair, this is, this is quite an important AS, document. ASMR oh, cast. This is this is the ASMR cast. Where we have Corey as our as our Should we all do this? Are we all going to talk like this? Yes. Are we going to continue talking about Stadia in this very soft and calming voice? Should I get like some some like props that I can rub? I got some coins. Yes. yes. Ooh, that sounds nice. <laughs> Here, let me click on my <laughs> control. Hold on, hold on. Can, let me see if you can hear this. Hold on, hold on. I don't know why I'm waving it around that. my microphone like <laughs> it's by <laughs> neuro. I'm petting my hedgehog. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I haven't, I haven't actually tried uh, hook, hooking up another controller to the Stadia, so I wouldn't really know that, but I know there is a way to do it. But I wasn't even going to try because it was hard enough to hook up the actual Stadia controller to the Google, uh, let alone a separate controller. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Roman Nomad is talking about some of the pricing stuff. Says uh, on the games front, if you stayed subscribed, they actually give you a lot of free games. Uh, 66. 66 to date with at least two a month since launch they also have a lot of deals but nothing that stands out the deals are usually decent but nothing approaching steam sale levels of discounts so that's good to hear especially since the pricing at um at launch was pretty fucked up so you, you would have to like pay for the game and then i believe there's like an additional service in order to get like 4k 60 God. otherwise you'd get like 1080 or, or sub um, but they, but they say overall it, when it works, it's fine. You can't, di- and you can't distinguish it between console and stadia but when it doesn't work or lags out. You get the feeling that you've wasted your money and time, especially if you already have a console or PC. And I, I, th- I think like my common, uh, go back for stadia or I guess like streaming services, um, video game streaming services in general is that they're great options mm. for people that don't have access to those consoles. But if it's going to be more of a pain in the ass or just exactly. as expensive as those means, then why even bother? Yeah, plus it's the whole thing of imagine like you can't afford a console, but you can get Stadia. So you get Stadia, get like Destiny 2, and then you go to play it only to find out that your Wi-Fi can't handle it. Exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like the opposite of what Nintendo's doing with their uh, oh, with them streaming like big games on the yeah. Switch. Like what what control did was you could you can't even buy control unless you play the demo of the game, which is the first like 30 or 40 minutes. And you can only buy the game if your Wi-Fi can like handle it mm-hmm. like they, they are specifically doing that to make sure that your Wi-Fi can handle the game. So they don't get a fuck butt ton of people like trying to get refunds because they find out that their Wi-Fi can't 
handle it like i feel like stadia is like the complete opposite of that it's like oh throw your money to yeah. the to the wind unless in Corey's case google just like begs you at your front door to please take the stadia off of our hands you know, stadia, yeah i don't know how that um, happened <laughs> it me as like something that was just a couple years too early like maybe when we were, we're playing with ps6s and xbox whatever <laughs> they want to call the next one uh xbox the one or something xbox one series <laughs> xbox, xbox one x series one. x s xbox uh, you know whenever we're playing around with those and we maybe uh, hypothetically if america can ever get their shit together with internet uh uh infrastructure you know maybe the stadia could actually be a real like contender with those but i think i mean just right now like if you live in the country if you live like in alabama and don't have good internet like this is this it's useless to you you mm-hmm. know i know us for at least we're in the we're in the bay area so we have access yeah. to fiber and whatnot i know i have uh 500 fiber down. Is really specific though like you need to have a specific setup yeah. for them to be able to like plug it in mm-hmm. so like i i have good old comcast man like i'm running out of comcast but... sponsored by comcast right comcast please give me free yeah. internet <laughs> I mean, you hear my buddy Jamie living out in like countryside Australia. It took him like 14 hours to install Battlefront 2. You know, oh, shit. he's not going to be able to play yeah. I remember, on Stadia. I remember back when I had like a shitty laptop trying to download Team Fortress 2. It would take me like, I shit you not, like an hour to get into a yeah. single match just to download whatever assets they had. It, it was it was a bad time. Yeah, my uh, my World of Warcraft partner is in uh, is in the middle of nowhere, Aus- Australia. So mm. whenever like a new WoW expansion comes out, he has to start downloading it, then go to bed and hope by the time he's woken up, it's done. While like for me, it takes like thirty minutes at the most, and I'll be like all set, all good, ready to ready to go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I think my uh, I think my eighteen or nineteen year old self is like. <laughs> would would absolutely uh shit his pants if he knew the battle station that i have now yeah because uh those laptop gaming days man they were yeah. uh excuse you <laughs> they were coming to the person using a gaming laptop to do this <laughs> yes i mean like, gaming now, laptops are fine. now they're a lot better now it gaming laps, like, <laughs> i'm talking about back when i was like 19 i had like an hp laptop and i would game off of that and, oh like, hot damn yeah you were <laughs> so, you were you were running deep I was running deep, and then I figured, and then I found out when um, what was it when the first Amnesia game came out? I did a, so much research research that I figured out what OpenGL even meant for games, and that I had an Intel graphics card and I couldn't run that. So I was like, oh, "This no. is bull crap." <laughs> um, before we move on, just uh, I guess two two important notes. Uh, thank you, Ramen Nomad, for going and shooting me over those notes. Um, that was incredibly helpful. And uh, two, uh, gaming laptops are the Andrew Garfield of Spider-Man. Anyway, moving on to uh, next news story. 